Just to be clear, I think diversity is a good thing. Having people from varied cultures, ethnicities, religious affiliations, sexual orientations, etc. ultimately makes society a more interesting and dynamic place. However, this diversity should not be forced, especially in the workplace. Many of my friends are from overseas. They come from various religious backgrounds, speak different languages, eat different foods, and give me an insight into their own particular cultures. I'm all for an organic form of diversity, that is, diversity that gradually or naturally occurs over time as the world becomes a more globalised place. In this video, I'm not promoting hate of any kind. I think everyone, regardless of their backgrounds, should be given an equal opportunity. The only thing I'm promoting is fairness. I work for a university that over the last few years has created a diversity strategy document, which is publicly available online. I'm not going to reveal the name of the university, as I don't want to be seen to be targeting a single university. The problem that I am addressing today is not an isolated case. Almost all universities have similar policies, as well as many other big companies and organisations. This idea of a diverse workplace has swept throughout the Western world. Late last year, I was told that there was a new job opportunity at work. It involved using technology to transcribe lectures slash documents etc. into a readable format for students with a visual impairment or hearing loss. My supervisor at the time told me that it would be a sure bet that I would get the job, as I come from an IT background and I was already a university employee. So she set up a meeting slash interview with the department manager and one of my colleagues who worked in that section. The meeting was due to take place at, say, 1pm on the following Tuesday. I arrived at uni 10 minutes early and let reception know that I was there. The girl at reception then had a bit of a concerned look on her face and told me that the department manager won't be in. She had other business to attend to. I questioned the receptionist further, but she was hesitant to give me any details. It all sounded a bit suspicious. I waited around until finally the other guy I was meant to meet showed up 10 minutes late. We had our chat and I soon realised that there was no way I was getting this job. He pretended that I had a chance, but I think he knew all along what was really going on. I was so pissed off. 1. The manager didn't even send me a quick email or text message to tell me that she wouldn't be in. Imagine if the opposite had happened. Imagine if I showed up late, or didn't show up at all for a job interview. Would I get the job? Certainly not. But yet, the so-called manager who had agreed to the meeting a few days prior decided to just fob me off. No explanation. No apology. To this day, she has not mentioned it even once. Complete denial that the meeting ever occurred. I learnt later that a lady had got the job. A working mum, to be precise. The other employee in that section is a guy from a non-English speaking background. He's responsible for transcribing Australian English into a readable format for blind and deaf people. Now, Australian English can be hard to understand at the best of times, let alone for a non-English speaker. I deal with students on a daily basis, and some of my students are blind. Since having the new employees in that section, a couple of my students have noticed the decline in quality of the transcribed documents. One of my students even told me that his resources were arriving about four weeks late. When you're a student in the middle of a semester, especially a blind student, it's vitally important that you get your readings, textbook chapters, etc. on time. It really hindered his study throughout the semester. So what's my point? I think that these two employees were chosen not because they were the best people for the job, but because they fit into some perceived notion of being from a diverse background. The diversity strategy document that I mentioned earlier outlines some explicit diversity targets for the university. These include 40% of all senior salary package and executive staff to be female, 25% of all academic staff to be female, 50% of all professional staff to be female, increase the number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander staff in academic and professional positions to 2.5%, non-English speaking backgrounds NESB, staff recruited and developed in proportions equivalent to their representation in the Australian labour market. There's also mention of people practising different faiths, people with a disability, generational slash mature aged people, and LBGTI, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and intersex. I'm not making any of this up. These are actual policy targets. My question is, how can you realistically reach these targets in a fair way? I think there are only a couple of ways. 
Either you fire people who are not considered diverse, obviously this will never happen, or you only hire people who fit into your predefined notion of being from a diverse background, and I think that's what's happening. All of the new staff in my section are either women, or from non-English speaking backgrounds, or both, that is, non-English speaking women. My students have secretly complained, but aren't able to make a formal complaint, as that would be seen as discriminatory. One of my students, who has a visual impairment, requires someone to guide him to the entrance of the men's toilet. However, one of the new workers, due to her religious beliefs and cultural background, does not find it appropriate to do this. So instead, she drops him off about five meters away from the toilet block, forcing him to stumble and bumble his way to the toilet by himself. It was quite embarrassing for him. Luckily, he no longer has to deal with that worker due to a few other issues which I won't go into here. The university has set these targets, and I think managers are being pressured to only employ people from diverse backgrounds in order to meet the quotas. But think about it, if two people have been shortlisted, one English-speaking white male and one female from a non-English-speaking background, who's going to be employed? Managers have diversity targets to meet, so of course the female will get the job. As seen with the men's toilet example I mentioned before, some religious cultural backgrounds simply don't suit certain jobs. That's not being discriminatory, that's just being realistic. If I was born with no arms, I wouldn't expect anybody to hire me as a crane operator. At my last company, a big insurance firm, my manager was a very attractive young lady. She was managing a team of IT experts. Did she know anything about IT? Barely. How did she get the job, I wonder? Probably because the company had a diversity policy in place, where they were aiming for equal gender distribution in middle and upper management. This is where the problem lies. Companies aren't truly interested in diversity. They do it simply to promote themselves. In the insurance company's annual meetings and reports, they would pompously announce that they are now one of the most equal opportunity companies to work for. They would smugly state that they have one of the best female to male ratios in Australia. They were proud to have a partnership program with an IT company out of Shanghai. Even though we all knew the true reason, Shanghai IT workers are a lot cheaper than Australian ones. It's all an act, a show. It's not about diversity. It's about showing that you are diverse. Diversity is just a slogan. Diversity has been put ahead of fairness. Now, I'm all for anti-discrimination policy, but I think that's where it should stop. If a number of people apply for a computer programming job, it shouldn't matter if they're from a different religion or culture, if they're gay or straight, female or male, intersex or whatever. The best computer programmer should be chosen. To have predefined diversity targets is discrimination in itself. That is, people are being chosen not for their programming ability, but for the color of their skin, or the language they speak at home, or whether they have a vagina or not. That's discrimination. I have friends from Bangladesh, Libya, Papua New Guinea. My wife is from China. I'm not against diversity. I'm for fairness. Let's get rid of these stupid diversity targets and bring back common sense instead.